didn't really believe. I had a million questions. Pastor Paul offered to answer all of them. He would tell me to come prepared, bring your questions. Pastor Paul took us to see God's not dead, and it helped me to realize a lot and understand why people were praying and their beliefs. From the time I watched the movie, I knew I wanted to get baptized. In November 2014, I was baptized. I invited my friends and family to see me accept Jesus as my Lord, Lord and Savior. In December of 2014, I joined my first job at Pan Express. Once I was hired, I asked for some days off so I could attend church. My boss said, can you attend another day or find another church? I said, no, I love my pastor and church. <laughs> if you must schedule me on a Sunday, schedule me after one. It seemed my faith was being tested, but I believe I passed the test. test. Things were going great. Job was good, school was good, life was good. Then the devil tried to step in. On April 24, 2015, my two friends and I were in a fatal car accident. We were t bone on 63rd Avenue in Lower Buckeye. After completing a day of our junior year, having pizza and wings, and dropping off my cousin Cheyenne, my mother believed I was on my way home to get ready for work, then to drop off my best friend, Tajani, to her wire banquet, and take the Kia home and make my way to work. The devil had other motives. This was the day our life would be changed. My mother and Tajani's mom found out from Instagram about the accident. They showed up to the scene after Kia and myself were rushed to Good Samaritan Hospital in critical condition, and Todd was taken to Phoenix Children's Hospital. Todd sustained skull fractures, a concussion, and was released from the hospital about a week after the accident. Kia, they believe, was pregnant at the scene of the accident, and I lost her a few days after the accident. She's cheering, dancing, and watching over us from heaven out. I miss her so much. I had multiple, multiple injuries. Fractured pelvis, which they believe were prior surgery. Fractured ribs, facial fractures, lacerated liver, and bladder. The list goes on. I was not doing well. I suffered a traumatic brain injury. I was placed in a medically induced coma and had a lot of brain swelling and bleeding. They had to place strains in my head to remove the excess fluid and tried to keep the fluid down. On April 29, 2016, the swelling was just too much. My ICC levels would not go down. Dr. Kumar, Kumar woke my mom and Michael up from the waiting room and informed them that I would need to have emergency surgery to remove a portion of my skull to allow for the swelling and to save my life. The surgery went well. My ICP levels were still elevated and they watched me closely. Things were not getting better. God stepped in late in the midnight hour and he turned my situation around. The doctor popped his head into the waiting room a few days later and told him I contemplated removing the other portion of her skull. If I had to do that, it would not have been a good outcome. He did not need to remove the other portion of my skull. God stepped in and said, not today. I am a child of God and he has other plans for me. My ICP levels went down. I started doing better. I was not on my way home anytime soon. My brain started to heal and the swelling started to go down. Eventually, I was moved from neuro ICU to trauma ICU. A good thing. While down in the ICU, they talked about surgery to repair my fractured pelvis. They prepared me for surgery to put in a tray and feeding tube. Surgery was to take six hours. The doctors were in about an hour. They were not able to perform the surgery. I did, however, receive my tray and the feeding tube. Surgery was not performed due to my bone flap being removed. I would have had to be face down for six hours. This was not a safe option. The surgeon told my family if I did not have the surgery, if I ever walk, I would be pain for the rest of my life. I was moved to the, from the ICU to another floor and eventually moved to Select Hospital at St. Joseph's Hospital. 
where they started some therapy until I had my bone flat replaced, I would say. The nurses and doctors were not sure of my outcome. They instructed my mother to sign up for a program, program called Altec, which would allow a nurse to be home with me and care for me for 24 hours a day. On June 24, 2016, I had my bone flap replaced with my pelvis rescan. I still needed to have surgery according to the doctors, and I had fluid build up in my brain. My doctor later informed me that since my accident, this may be my new norm. I was released back to select where I continued recovering and therapy. I was non weight bearing for about three months. It was nearing time for me to leave select. I was getting better. My orthopedic surgeon was released from the practice and I no longer had a pelvic doctor. The select hospital found me another doctor to perform a scan of my pelvis. The scan determined that my pelvis was healing fine and I was allowed to be partial weight bearing. The team started working on my strengthening for my lower extremities and prepared me to walk. With the walker, I did fine and was later released to Cameroon. While in Cameroon, I was not allowed to leave. On Sundays, there were two people that would visit, read me the Bible and pray for me. I attended numerous therapies and continued to strengthen my body. I had a follow-up with the orthopedic surgeon, at which point he released me to be full weight bearing. In August, I was released and ready to move to Barrows and inpatient rehabilitation. They focused on my cognitive retraining, speech, occupational, and physical therapy. I was finally released to go home without a nurse needing to be with me on, eight, on August 20, 2015. God is good. I was walking without pain, which they said was going to be nearly impossible. I did not need a nurse 24 hours a day to take care of me, which they thought I may need. My recovery has been nothing short of a miracle, and one of God's miracles. I still continue my therapy and have not been allowed to go back to school to complete my senior year with my friends. But I did just attend what would have been my senior prom with my friends, and there is a class getting back to school this fall. I may not understand why this accident had to happen. Why my friend Taj was injured and I lost one of my best friends, Zakia. But I know that God would never put me through what I couldn't handle. I know that I'm here for a reason and I have an amazing story. And I'm a fighter and with God I can get through anything. He has seen me through. And walking with no pain, I have been approved to have an hour unsupervised time. I am making progress and exceeding expectations. I owe it all to God. I am so glad Michael brought us to church and that I met Pastor Paul and he introduced me to God. He made me a believer and after everything that I have been through, I know that God is real and with him all things are possible. My mom would say this prayer to me while recovering. Jesus, thank you for everything you have done for me. Everything you are going to do, everything you are doing and everything you are about to do. Because we know by your strength you are healing Jasmine and will continue doing so. It was short and simple, but by his strength I am being healed. I appreciate the Thank you.